not room service. All right, so we had Linda Carter, we had uh, Angelina Jolie, we had uh, uh, Pam Greer, and now Zoe Saldana. Or do you feel comfortable with the title of being like the next female action star or the, or the one that's... And we also had Eartha Kitt. And Eartha well. Kitt, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, I, I feel so happy to be uh, at least loosely included in a group of women that throughout film history uh, uh, have have distinguished themselves by not only being amazing character actresses but also being physically agile. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's you know if you have it, use it. Yeah, yeah. And and I think that because of my ballet background, I've had the privilege of of being able to tap you know uh, less uh, easily mm -hmm. into into roles that are physically demanding as well as emotionally, of course. Okay, I want to talk about Amanda Stenberg too because she she plays oh a young. God. Kelly, and she's bringing it also. Uh, how was it working with her, and and did y'all like train together? And, and she, we did, we did. We had a couple of meetings when she was cast uh, at, um, in California, and it was just about us studying each other. So there were moments in which like we we could just be having lunch, and I would find her looking at me, and and we we were we wanted to learn things that we do in common. And one thing that we found out very early on as soon as we met is that we both like to pick our ear when we're listening or talking. We're just like picking our ear. And Olivier Megadon, who was watching us and he was recording us, he was like, okay, good, keep yeah. that. Whatever it is that you guys are doing, you guys are doing it at the same time. Do you guys know that you guys do it on purpose? And we're like, no. We're like, oh look at you, look at you. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so we kept doing that, um, but she was exceptional because um, uh, she really tapped into this character and this this melancholy that this character needs to, to to possess in order to deliver her into once it falls in my hands right. and and uh, and we were just absolutely blown away. exactly where you are. Whatever the pain, I double it. Please don't kill me. I'm not gonna kill you. Oh no, no. With Avatar and all these movies you've done, when the movie is over, do you still train? Are you practicing kick-ass moves all year? Or? Um, <laughs> I do. You know, my my stunt coordinator that trained me for Avatar, Garrett Warren, who's a very good friend. Uh, I do. I do train with him like once every two weeks or something. But I I've learned now the older that I'm getting. Uh, when I finish a movie and I don't have anything lined up, I really have to relax because yeah. my body starts asking for that. And even if my brain wants to take the, pick my butt up and take me to the gym, my body's just like, I don't know what we're doing here, but you think you're gonna work out? Good luck. I can't even. I, <laughs> my legs feel like cement. Like I cannot move, and it's. I, so I do. I do give myself a break. But as soon as I know that I need to do a film, mm -hmm. uh, I like to know three months and a half at a time. Because I immediately start just hitting it hard. Okay, and let me talk about working with Olivier and Luke Besson, because you've worked with a lot of great directors and producers, J.J. Abrams, Bruckheimer, Spielberg, all these great people, and um, James Cameron. How was it working with them on this? Because it looks like you kick double the ass of salt for half the budget. <laughs> it's like a two-in-one special. Um, I felt so privileged. It's moments like that when you when you know that you're gonna do a movie with Luke Besson or James Cameron or JJ or Steven, that that I feel that's when I sort of step outside of myself and I go, way to go, kid, because that is my main goal, uh, uh, and that's the reason as to why I became an actor. It's to work with uh, filmmakers that, that when I was a little girl, they're the reasons I got here. Because I would look at Terminator and I would look at Cocoon and E.T. and I would just go. 
one day, or like the big blue and the, the Femniquita and Lyon, I would go, one day I'm gonna work, I'm gonna work with them. I'm totally right, you hearing me? I'm gonna totally work with them. And then I've been crossing these names out of my bucket list. I feel really, really blessed. And and they have, they have not been disappointing, yeah. none of them. And I feel so blessed because they have gotten to where they are because they're amazing, they're fathers, they're sons, they're brothers, they're friends, they're men before they are filmmakers. And they incorporate all that into their into their their magic. And and I like the fact that that these men also, the one that they have in common is that they really like to see women play different things besides the conventional roles right. that we've been subjected to playing since the beginning of time. Well, you never disappoint either. I've been a fan since Drumline and your career is going so far, I'll be following you forever. So thank you for your time. Thank you. And good luck with everything. Thank you, Jamal. Thank, thank you. you.